Good afternoon and welcome to today's webinar, Lifting the Lid on Your Business Growth. My name is Daryl Giles from CCIQ and I'm your facilitator for today. This webinar will explore the ingredients that help grow the effectiveness of the business owner and leadership team. In turn, this will help grow the business. Business ownership can often be overwhelming with the associated pressures and the pain. Working on your business is often the last thing on your to-do list and working on yourself may not be listed at all. A strategy of personal growth for you and your team should form part of your business plan and an investment made in this area should see a measurable return. First, some tips to get the most from today's session. We will be online for about 45 minutes and following the main presentation, there will be an opportunity for questions and answers. Please send through your questions for Tony and Wendy using the text box on screen. At the end of the presentation, we will collate all the questions and answer as many as we can. Following the session, we will email all participants a copy of the presentation, a link and additional supporting information. So please check your inboxes later today. So now I'll hand over to Tony Curl and Wendy Burns from Think and Grow Business to take you through today's webinar. Hi everyone, it's Tony. Yes, good afternoon everyone, this is Wendy. And today we are going to talk about McDonald's. That's right, we're going to have a little bit fun, a bit of fun exploring McDonald's and everybody will have some great memories of some McDonald's restaurants. What about you, Tony? Yes, I've got a lot of good memories about McDonald's being able to take my young fella for a happy meal after scoring his first try in, in rugby league, being able to take my daughter there after dance recitals, you know, those sorts of things. They're wonderful memories that we all have and that we all would have about McDonald's. Yes, look, still today my grandson is um, part of a rugby league team and the, the award they get is a, Mac, uh, a McDonald's Happy Meal. Yeah. And funnily enough, McDonald's really has still only been in Australia for such a short amount of time. Believe it or not, I was at Maroochydore when they opened the first McDonald's restaurant at Maroochydore and then I backed it up because I was living in Townsville when they first started to open up there. Well, I'm certainly not going to talk to you today about where I was when the first McDonald's restaurant opened around me because that might give away my age and we're not going to discuss that today on this webinar. But what we are going to do is explore a bit of fun around McDonald's and uh, the business growth there. Yeah, so the seminar, the webinar is around business growth and, and truly we're going to explore the story behind the story of McDonald's and we're going to talk about the two McDonald brothers, Dick and Maurice, because it is a question of growth and we know that some businesses embrace growth while others find it a very frustrating and elusive um, scenario that they can never seem to get um, happening for themselves. So we're going to explore the story behind McDonald's and that will open up what we call the big limiter. That's, uh, we're going to look at what are the limitations that were placed on uh, the McDonald brothers or what the limitations were they placed on themselves and also potentially look at what are the limitations you could be placing on yourself as a business owner or operator. And we're also going to look at the foundation to growth, to drive and to build your business. And we'll end up giving you those two key foundations that will enable you to explore the growth opportunities that are available not just within your business but within yourself. So let's talk about Dick and Maurice. They left New Hampshire to go to California to chase the Californian dream. Now, I don't know about you, the American dream. I, I don't know about you, but there's probably no better place than California to chase the American dream. I, I've got visions of Beach Boys and Gidget on the beach. But they opened the, a theatre in Glendale, um, which was their first business enterprise. That's right. It was a theatre that they opened and it wasn't a success for them initially. They had an entrepreneurial spirit that started with them when they left university and they headed off to California and that's when their dream to grow started. So after the theatre they opened up their first drive-in restaurant in 1937 at a place called Pasadena which is just northeast of Glendale. Now, despite working very, very hard on this particular restaurant, they just could never make it profitable. So despite all their efforts, they just couldn't make this restaurant succeed. Now, 
on the back of some of the changes in society that they were witnessing in America, there was a greater reliance on the automobile. Cars were becoming more commonplace. They moved the restaurant to San Bernardino in California in 1940. And they introduced, or they foresaw the trend of people driving up to the restaurant and being served by car hops. Yes, I'm sure we've got memories of the happy days where we've seen those uh, the car hops coming out to serve you with the crockery and the metal utensils. Well, that was part of what Dick and Maurice were doing. They needed to modify to change with society, and this is where their strength zone came into play. They became strong in the area of kitchen and assembly line, and this was their first real success. They, they created a speedy service system. And in the 1950s, their annual revenue actually grew to 350,000 with a net profit of 100,000, which made them up with the top elite in the town they lived in at that time. So you can understand <coughs> they were successful with a single restaurant operation. And it was interesting, before they made those changes with the speedy service and they looked at systemising and creating a consistent quality within their business, they were still, even though they foresaw the trend of automobiles and they saw people eating in their cars, I, I guess we still eat in our cars today while we're waiting at the drive through line at, at a McDonald's store. But they were still using things like crockery and metal utensils. So they initially foresaw the trend and then as the trend evolved, they, they changed that trend. And to be making $100,000 net profit in the mid-1950s indicated the level of success that that particular business had. They had intuition about how to grow their business. The problem for them was they did not know how to grow it. They had the intuition to know it had to happen, but to be able to grow it was another thing. This is where they hit the limit or the lid they placed on themselves in their business. Yeah, so it was interesting. They, they'd systemised they, the consistent quality. They focused on their customer service so much so that they had people visiting them from all over America to visit their single operation at San Bernardino. And this is when they started to think about the concept of franchising. This is when they started to realise that maybe there was something in what they were doing. But their foray initially into franchising was not great. They sold 15 franchises, but only 10 opened. They simply lacked the ability to take it that little bit further. And there was a gentleman in Phoenix at the time by the name of Fox. And he initially purchased one of those franchise and uh, he wanted to name the business McDonald's. And the famous quote that comes out of that is that the McDonald's brothers couldn't understand why you would want to call a restaurant in Phoenix McDonald's. McDonald's means nothing in Phoenix. And now it's, um, it's McDonald's means something worldwide. So in a lot of respects, I'm sure it means something now in Phoenix, but in a lot of respects uh, they were constrained by their, their level of thinking, their level of vision and what potential that business actually had. Along came Ray Kroc. Ray Kroc was a supplier to the McDonald's brothers at that time. He supplied milkshake machines. From the minute he walked into that restaurant, he saw the potential. He saw the vision for a nationwide restaurant. And that's why he, he put that into play. He stepped in, he understood the systems and he saw the vision. And that's what a true leader has to see. They see further and they see first as they step into the role of leadership. And what I really liked about Ray was the concept of sacrifice that he was able to, to bring to that vision that he saw. So initially he bought a franchise and he worked that franchise so he could understand what the model was and how it was in depth understanding of what the model was. He then sacrificed salary from himself for the first eight years. Now. That's belief, that's knowing what the vision is, that's knowing about the potential. But the other thing that he was able to do because of that. He also borrowed money on his life insurance policy to cover the cost of hiring leaders that he wanted on his team. He knew that he needed key leaders 
to take this vision further. See, as a leader, we don't need to know everything to grow our business, but we position ourselves with people around us that do know what we don't know to be able to take our vision further. And in four years, uh, he grew the business immensely. Yeah, so if we think back to the McDonald's first foray into franchising, over three years they were able to successfully sell 15 franchises, and of which 10 opened. Now the first four years that Ray Kroc was involved, there was 100 restaurants opened. The next four years saw that number escalate to 500. So from a growth perspective, the, the McDonald's chain was very much stagnant until the application or the introduction of Ray Kroc into the business. And today, well there's 35,000 McDonald's in 118 countries. And really the story behind the story tells us that maybe that could have been incredibly different if Ray Kroc hadn't come into the scene. Yes, we can see from the graph that's in front of us the growth that happened when Ray came on board. Um, and for somebody that's visual, it's, it's great to be able to see what's actually happening within that business growth. And for each one of us that has a small business, it's important that we graph where we're growing and where the peaks and troughs are in our growth plan. I think there's a, a number of questions that business owners would be asking themselves when they see a graph like that. A one is, I wish that was mine. And um, but the reality is, is there something within your business, or whether it's a product, whether it's a, a service that you're offering, that could experience that sort of growth? And what is it that you need, and what is it that you desire, and what is needed for us to, um, for you to be able to maximise the growth potential of your particular business? So the graph is important because it understands for us the stagnant. Um, I, I suppose introduction of McDonald's into the world and then as you can see from 1952 when Ray Kroc became involved you can see a rapid spike and, uh, and that just continued through. So let's just take a moment and look at the difference between the McDonald brothers and Ray Kroc. And I think it's important that we acknowledge the strengths of the McDonald's brothers. So they were successful single restaurant operators. Uh, they had a focus on their customer service. They had an entrepreneurial spirit, and I hope I said that right, um, because they were able to, their first two ventures failed. There, there was a theatre in their initial restaurant. So in many ways people would have, potentially would have stopped after that. But they kept going because they, they, were, um, they were business people. They were able to systemise what they did, they were able to make it consistent, they were able to foresee trends in a lot of respects. Most importantly, they were able to make that restaurant profitable and there's a lot of great businesses out there that struggle with that concept of making it profitable. But they were limited by their lid. Ultimately, the success of McDonald's or the potential of McDonald's back in that time, they were limited by their lid and they were limited by their thinking. They were great at what they were doing, that's right. They were successful in the, in the system side of the business. But when young Ray Kroc came along, and, and really he wasn't that young, he was 55 when he stepped into the McDonald's business, he learned the system. He had the vision from the very first time. Uh, he, had a, he saw the vision of a nationwide restaurant. He had a network to make that happen and he enhanced the connection. He also worked very hard to create the product. McDonald's was brought to life through this enhanced vision and leadership capability. To the point in 1961, Ray bought the exclusive rights to McDonald's for $2.7 million. So the McDonald brothers didn't altogether miss out and uh, a couple of million dollars back in the 60s would have been, um, would have put them am amongst the most uh, rich people in America, I'm guessing. But So they didn't miss out, but when you think about 35,000 outlets now in 118 countries, the, the potential was still ongoing. So that uh, certainly didn't max out the, the potential of that particular business. And so let's talk about the big limiter. The success of the business is relative to the effectiveness of the leader. Yes, and the big limiter is so often ourselves. We're limited by our vision 
or a sense that we have a lack of capability to bring that to life. And I find that the businesses that I work with are often limited by the busyness that they have currently working in their business. They spend their time working in the business, which is what you have to do uh, for a time to bring the money in, instead of working on their business. So we see that ability to review, the ability to reflect, um, the ability to work on your business and not just in as a, as a, a real critical leadership aspect that business owners need to be doing. We also see the, the reverse, I guess. In, in some businesses, they get into this explosive growth stage and the challenge that they then have is that the capability of the leader and the capability of the people within that business really struggle to cope with that explosive growth. I'm working with a business at the moment that's in an explosive growth stage uh, and for the owner of that business, I think it can become overwhelming when that happens, when you don't have the support network that's around you to make that come into play. So I'm working with him and his team to be able to go forth with that growth and put the structure around that business to take it to the next stage. And then just the last concept there is about inner circle thinking and sometimes we see uh, the thinking within the teams, it, it becomes really stagnant. So if you're not generating fresh ideas, fresh thoughts, you are going to really struggle to achieve some growth. So when your team is stagnant, when the thought process behind your business is stagnant, we see businesses really struggle. So uh, the ability to be able to have that, uh, to initiate fresh, uh, fresh thinking and bring that into your team really helps us um, change that process. The last thing you want is a a stagnant team running your business. We often talk about the power of the inner circle, Tony, about the importance of who we put around us and that's where an awareness and intention comes into play because we believe this is the foundation for growth in any business. Yeah, so once again we talk about the success of the business is relative to the effectiveness of the leader and we talk about when the leader grows the people around the leader grows and funnily enough, so does the business. And I see it in a number of people that I deal with where the business has taken, sorry, the business owner has taken that intentional step towards understanding how they can be better and their team elevates with them. And they're, all of a sudden as their team elevates, their business elevates. And it's a real focus of ours to help people do that. And one of the key things that uh, we're both John Maxwell coaches and one of the key things that John always talks about that if we want better, we have to be better. So if you want a better business, if you want your team to be better, if you want your people to be better, if you want your life to be better, the first step is that you have to be better and you've got to have an awareness to help you achieve that. Yes, one of Tony's greatest sayings is you don't know what you don't know and uh, it's very important if you're planning to grow your business and to grow yourself, this is where your awareness and your honesty to yourself comes into play. Uh, being, uh, being honest about what you know and what you don't know, what are your strengths and what are your weaknesses and I know personally that people will pay a lot of money to come and, and listen to somebody speak who's speaking in their strength zone but people, people don't pay to come and listen to somebody who's speaking in their weak zone. So if we know what our strengths and our weaknesses are and these come into play when we have a growth plan and we're working with someone to help identify them. So if you want to change and grow then you must know yourself and accept who you are before you can start building. You must know yourself to grow yourself and that is such a key critical component of this. A lot of people believe that they know themselves and potentially there, there may be some delusional aspects within that. So that, that ability to be able to be honest with yourself but also to have that inner circle to help breed that honesty is also incredibly important. So an awareness of what is needed an awareness of what's desired. Wendy, I don't know about you, I talk to people all the time and I say, what is it that you want? And many people can't tell you what they actually want. They can tell you what you, they don't want. They don't want to be overweight. They don't want to have a bad boss. <laughs> Yet ultimately, a lot of people end up overweight with the worst leader that they could ever imagine. So it's important to understand what it is that you want. 
and that's where, as we said earlier, coming into play that honesty about uh, what you know and what you don't know, what's missing and what are the areas that you need to grow in. And that's where you get to understand what it is that, that you want and, and where you need to go as you go in your walk and your growth. And I think that's an important part you made about, uh, a point you made about strength zones. And it's important to understand your strengths. So we're not just talking about what you're missing, what your, what your opportunities are. We also need to acknowledge what our strengths are and how do we build them. And more importantly, how do we circle our strengths with people that can complement us and make that better. And we saw that come into play with Ray Kroc. He understood that he didn't have all the strengths that was needed to take that vision for a nationwide restaurant. So he sacrificed to put the people around him to ensure that vision came into play. And as a leader and as an owner of a business, there's many, many times that I'm sure the listeners today will, will acknowledge that we sacrifice for our businesses to grow. So we've talked about awareness and now we move into intention. And I've got a funny, I always have a saying that all the intention in the world doesn't get you off the couch because you need to put intentional action in behind it. But no business improves by accident and planning for growth is intentional. Yes, intention is one of the big things that, um, that I wave the banner of all the time. I know for me that um, I might have all these great dreams to grow my business, but they're not going to come to me if I'm sitting at home on my couch daydreaming about what my business could be. This is, takes an intentional, ad, um, intentional action on my part for that growth to come into play. And I just want to share with you, I hope you're all a, a rugby league fan out there, but if you're not, I ask for your forgiveness. I listened to Wayne Bennett as he was interviewed excuse me, on the ABC radio on Friday afternoon and, and we all know the great win that the Broncos had on Saturday. He was very intentional about that win. He talked at length about the fact that he didn't want those players to think it was any other game. He wanted them to know there was an intention behind winning to the point that he had them lock away to a camp in Brisbane on Friday night. He was specific in saying they could have sat at home with their family on the couch and just thought it was any other game, but he was intentional about what he wanted to do to win the game. And it's the same for us as a business owner and as a leader. We need to be intentional. We know the result that we want. He knew that he wanted to win the game, but we still need to play that game to get the result. So that requires us to be intentional in our thinking and intentional about our, our our actions and certainly it's one of the flags that I fly quite high. And there would have been many times during that game where the, the Broncos had to draw within themselves and get some inspiration happening because they were being peppered by one of the greatest halfbacks of all time in Jonathan Thurston. So they, they would have had to have drawn into their inspiration based around the intention of what they wanted to achieve out of the game. And the other scenario that I just talk about in relation to inspiration. When you look at last year when South rolled off the back of emotion and inspiration to get their first premiership in over 43 years, they, they had an intention that that is what they wanted to achieve and you saw the momentum build as they went through the season. This year it's, it's a completely different story. Now admittedly they've had some injuries and they've had some hiccups along the way but ultimately they couldn't account for, this, for the same momentum because they had what we call our inspiration drops. And when you're intentional in what you want to do and what you want to achieve, where you wish to grow, taking your planning um, to the next level, that helps you account for those inspiration drops. And that's where an accountability partner or somebody that you're working with that knows the vision that you want to create uh, is there to inspire you and to encourage you and also call you to be the very best you can be in your business. As we've got there in that little slide, no business improves by accident. Planning for growth is intentional and that comes with your own intentional accountability as a leader or as a business owner. And the last comment just around intention is we know that environment is stronger than will. You can have every, all the, all the will in the world, 
but ultimately it's it's wholly and solely contained within yourself. It's one person. When you surround yourself with an environment of growth and people that want your success and are willing to help you get there, it's not just your will that gets you there, it's the environment that is created. So look within your inner circle, ask yourself how can I create that growth? You may be in a business that's got a bit of stagnant team scenario. Intentional growth won't come from that. So how do you create that environment that's going to be stronger than will? And certainly if you're a one or two person business out there listening today, look outside of your business environment for other people that, that can encourage you. And that's part of being part of CCIQ as well, is about you have people that encourage you and walk alongside you as you grow your business. So it's important that you do that and grow that inner circle. So Tony, let's look at the leadership and capabilities of uh, that become an advantage of being a leader. Absolutely. And because I, I speak to people often and sometimes they can't see how leadership is actually, or leadership or developing their own leadership skills is going to help them with their business. So we know the ability for people that have taken the steps to grow themselves as leader and the impact that it has not just on their team but in their business. And so we've listed up a couple of those leadership skills. Now the strength of your leadership is determined by the strength of your character and your character is really firmly driven by those things like trust and respect. Now that helps you build influence and build rapport. And then with those two key fundamentals you can start to improve your employee engagement, create better connection with your customers and build longer lasting relationships with those very same customers. And as we know, the, the longer you can hold a customer, the less often you have to go chase a new one to bring them into your business. Yes, the power of our influence is beyond measure as we um, grow our businesses and we work in our businesses and also the importance of communication. Quite often people will say they've spoken to somebody about something or they've told them something but there's a difference between having a conversation and communicating and having that relationship and I know from my personal experience um, uh, I, I managed the, the major contracts for the state of Queensland in one of my previous roles and the reason I was successful is because I based that business around relationship and great communication and that's what stood out and that then goes on to build trust and respect, focus and vision. Yep, so <clears throat> probably 80% of the businesses I talk with uh, have some level of communication that puts some pressure on their operation or some pain points. and. One of the key things that I talk to them about is communication is a skill that can be developed. The other two, just on that page there, Wendy, we, we talk about focus and we talk about vision. Um, so I'll, I'll briefly talk about focus and I'll leave vision up to yourself. So when we talk about focus, it enables us to prioritise, helps us plan and keeps control of what, what is commonly known as time management. The reality is you can't stop the clock. All you can do is focus on your priorities about what's important. I call it the big rocks. So what are the big rocks within your business that you need to make sure that are happening each and every day? Now by having that focus it breeds that discipline around you and it breeds that discipline within uh, your business and ultimately that will lead to better results. Too many people today say there's not enough hours in the day. Well, guess what? There's 24. <laughs> We're stuck with it. But it's the same amount of hours that people like Oprah Winfrey, Richard Branson, um, all these amazing people around the world have, have got the same amount of time that we have, yet for some reason they've been able to channel their focus and their priorities into making something that's absolutely lasting and instrumental. I love that word discipline because di discipline and sacrifice come into play together and that's what happens when you have a vision. You have to be disciplined and you have to be prepared to sacrifice. You have to have an awareness of uh, your limitations and the awareness of where your growth needs to go and as I said earlier, you have to be intentional about making that happen. I believe that everybody should have a growth plan, one for them, their business and one for their own personal growth and uh, certainly that's what we work in doing. It's about awareness and intentional action and you don't know what you don't know. So it's important to get those things into play. 
so we talked about goal setting and planning as well. So in respect of goal setting, it's under set. You need to have a vision of where you want your business to go. And I'll just take over from you when that's all right. But it's important to understand where, where you want your vis business to go. You need to have that vision. But you also need to have contingency planning along the way. You need to be able to map around any roadblocks, obstacles that come into your way. But you also need to be aware that they're going to come into your way. So vision by itself is something that's incredibly important. But, but to be able to map your way to the vision is incredibly important. I think the great Stephen Covey always talked about begin with the end in mind and that's absolutely instrumental when you're talking about things like vision, goal setting and planning because if you don't start with the end in mind, you're not going to achieve what it is that you want to achieve. Absolutely love that quote, starting with the end in mind, being able to look back and see this is what I want but the how do I, what are the steps I need to get there and that goal setting and planning certainly comes into play when you do that. So in summary, we've talked about McDonald's and we've talked about some of our memories of McDonald's but more importantly we've talked about the story behind uh, the story behind the story of McDonald's. So we talked about how we've explored and unwrapped or uncovered that um, the, the Ray Kroc scenario with the McDonald brothers and how the um, McDonald's potentially was going to be constrained without the introduction of Ray Kroc. So the big limiter that we found out or that we explored was the big limiter for the McDonald's story was actually Dick and Maurice McDonald's. Even though they were successful single businessmen, they, they the actual potential of McDonald's was constrained by their leadership capabilities. And we can't forget the fact that we've talked about rugby league today and we've talked about awareness and intention. But if you look back at any great business, if you look back at any great entrepreneur that has taken off and been able to grow their business, it comes out of that, if you looked at them and you dissected their business, you would see that awareness and that intentionality in what they're doing. You would see that goal setting and that planning. You would see the legs that they placed on the vision, whether it's the people that they placed around them in the key leaders, uh, whatever action that that they, they use, they, they certainly um, put themselves in play to make it, ha to make it happen. I use an acronym called ACT, A-C-T. It takes action, it takes change, and often it takes tweaking what we do to make things come into play. And that's a really good acronym to, I guess, end this webinar on because at the end of the day, the foundation for growth lies in awareness and intention. And if we um, want to truly explore the, the real potential within your business, we need to open up the awareness of the business owner or the leader and then we need to work together and create an intentional plan for the growth of the leader which will subsequently build the growth within that business. So, so I'll hand it back to our wonderful facilitator. Thank you very much, uh, Tony and Wendy, for such an informative presentation, which has given our small business members some expert advice on business growth and how to sustain it. It is now time for our question and answer session, so please send through your questions for Tony and Wendy using the text box on screen, and they will answer as many as they can in the remaining minutes. We've got some questions already to get started with, so uh, first one. Uh, small business owners often work long hours and often by themselves. How do you feel owners in this situation can start building awareness about the growth opportunities they have? Well, I'll answer that one today. Um, small business, when you work a, as a small business and on your own, uh, you can often get consumed by the circumstances in your business at the time. And Tony and I have spoken today about the importance of um, growth and about your growth plan. Having the time to reflect on where you're going and what you're doing is very important, uh, I believe, as a small business owner, as anybody. Uh, it's one of the tools that I use to be able to reflect on what's working well and what do I need to do differently uh, to grow my business to the next stage. So when you, when you are on your own, having that time, having that set aside time, for me, it's every day in the car as I drive home, I think, you know, did I add value today? What worked well? What do I need to change? What are the areas that I need to 
to grow in. Because what can happen is we can, as we've talked about the word stagnate, we can get caught up in the, in the, the stagnant part of our business where it's every day the same. But you, you need to change something every day if you want to grow. Absolutely. Yeah, well answered, Wendy. I, I would just um, reiterate and just confirm that that concept of being able to every day do something that's going to help you get better and that process of review and refre reflection that you spoke about. So, yeah, but we, we all work very hard and small business owners sometimes find it really difficult to get out of their store or, or their business. So it's important for them, whether it's in the car, whether it's with a mate on a Friday night, whether it's out walking with your wife, that you take some time to reflect and review to be able to um, help make you better and your business better. One of the buzzwords we hear today is, is disruption, particularly disruption in industry as well as, as existing businesses being di disrupted by new technology. If faced with these scenarios, which makes growth often very hard, what advice is available for a business owner? Yeah, that's a, that's a very difficult question to answer or to give some certainty about. One thing I do know is that the world continually evolves and we are going to continue to see more and more disruption. We see a lot of um, business models currently waning in their life cycles. So one thing I do know is that the level of thinking that took that business to where it is now need, is not the level of thinking that needs to take it to the next level on a, or how to compete with the disruptive technologies that are, that are coming through. So the challenge when you're faced within that is that somewhere along the line there needs to be a fresh approach, a fresh look at your business. Holding on to the status quo will only create something that you've already got. Uh, or potentially worse, something you'll start losing what you've got. You've got to be able to look at it with a fresh set of eyes, a fresh set of thought processes. Once again, surround yourself with the, the best quality people to, to change that thought process. So, you know, I wouldn't be owning a news agent at the moment, at the moment, at, because of the introduction of digital news, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. And they're they're struggling. They're they're fighting really hard to to hold a model together that potentially we may not see in 10 years' time. We see the current thing with Uber and taxis, for example, as a real change to the way that the, the industry is working. We see Airbnb, we see all this stuff starting to line up. Now the challenge we've got is that for those existing industries, yes, there's, going to, there, there's pain, but we need to in some ways divorce ourselves from that pain and change the way that we think within those industries on how do we continue to compete. Natalie asks an interesting question. How far forward into the future should we make a growth action plan? Are we talking days, weeks, months or years? I'll take that question. Uh, the clients that I work with, we look at a, uh, we start with one year we look at one year, then we move on to five years, but we start with a one year action plan. What are the things I need to do in the next 12 months? And we have a review, review date, we review monthly, we review then with the first month, then the third month, the sixth, the ninth and the twelfth month. So it's about looking forward on your growth and your action plan. Starting out with 12 months is a good, it's an achievable, so you need to have something that you feel that you can achieve on your growth plan and then look further past that. Yeah, I think it's also important to add, that's absolutely right, it's, uh, if, no matter what sort of time frame you're looking at, it's important that you've got daily actions that are taking you one step closer every single day. So the day that you set the plan is the furthest you ever want to be from where you desire to be. So uh, a gentleman that's got to lose you know, a large amount of weight, if he's focused on the 20 kilos he's got to lose, potentially he loses one or two and he feels disheartened because he hasn't lost the 20. The reality is he wants to lose one kilo 20 times. So it's just the way that you think about it and it's about taking those steps daily that will achieve. I would probably agree with the, absolutely with the 12 month plan and then you start to challenge people on where they want to be in five years time because if you don't do that, potentially where they are today, where they are in five years time is exactly where they are today. So it's good to have someone that's going to challenge your parameters in regards to a personal growth plan. 
and important in that one of our greatest mentor, our mentor is John C. Maxwell and he has a daily rule of five. There are five things that he does every day and for me I have five things that I do every day as part of my growth plan and that's to ensure that I reflect as, as one of my five things. So it's important as Tony said, there's an old analogy, how do you eat an elephant a bite at a time and that's a daily uh, way of doing things. So you create your growth plan, you work with someone to put it into play and then you look at it on a daily basis, as I said, every three, six, nine, 12 months. So there's ways forward with that. But the whole point is starting. You need to start and it takes an action to step forward to make that happen. Thank you for your question. Mary Jane points out that many small business owners are limited with resources and finance. So how do they go about surrounding themselves with people who are good at what they might not necessarily be good at? I'll take that one because <laughs> I, I don't think there's a small business out there that's ever flush with resources or finances to be quite honest. I, I certainly am not. I, I would like to be more flush with resources. So I think it's it, it's important to be able to select who you associate with, you know. So, and, and we don't necessarily talk about having to pay for your inner circle. It, it's, um, you know, we talk about collaboration, who, who we are. We, even though there's three coaches within Think and Grow Business, we actually had collaborate with another eight and we hold each other accountable, even though that potentially some people may see us as competing with some of them. And so we collaborate within our industry uh, group um, to help hold us accountable. Um, and that doesn't actually cost us anything bar maybe if it's my shout for coffee, you know. So it's about determining the, the extent of what you're looking for. I do know that there are a number of low cost mentoring programs that are available through certain advisory services. But the reality is that if you look hard enough and if you ask the right questions, you know, John Maxwell once again talks about who, who do you know that I should know? So it's about asking your current network, who is out there that can help me with this? And um, you know, it doesn't always have to be a commercial arrangement, but there needs to be that collaborative approach. You mentioned the word network. It's important to look at the network that you're in currently at the moment and it's okay to change and to cut free from some things that you're doing and start to work into different areas of building your network. And Tony's uh, absolutely correct. It doesn't have to be something that you're paying for because small business doesn't have a lot of money. But it's about, but you will have. <laughs> you make take these actions and you will have. But this is about putting people around you that are going to encourage you and that um, if you're the smartest person in the room is a great quote, you're in the wrong room. You need to put smart people around you, learn from them, grow from them and that's how you start to grow in that inner circle. Actually, it's interesting. You just reminded me of, of one of the stories of, of John Maxwell when he first started branching into leadership coaching and he, he wasn't flush with money at this particular time and he took it upon himself to write to people that he wanted to spend time with and he offered them, I, I think, some minuscule amount, whether it was $50 or $100, for him to meet with some of the, the most influential and successful people that he could think of. Now, he got a lot of rejection out of that, but he also got the ability to, to have a chat with some of these most successful people. And yes, he stuck to his word and he put $100 on the table or whatever it was because there, there's that level of integrity. But he was able to understand what, it, what, what um, how those successful people became successful in a very systematic way. That's what he decided to do. He was intentional about that. He made those plans. So maybe if that's something that um, you can do, find out who's successful in the industry that you're in and go pick their brain. And one of the other things you can think about as well is learning to ask great questions because it's one thing being in the room with people that you want to learn from but the other thing is being prepared to ask the questions that you want to know. So it's wonderful to have a list of things in your mind, write them down, learn them, understand what are the areas that you want to grow in and ask those questions. How did you do it? How did you achieve it? So when you get those opportunities, jump on board and take them and that's where your growth will come. I wish you luck in your journey. 
and, and I've just put on the screen one of the free offers that we actually have out there which is the free leadership assessment. So if that helps you get started in your journey, that's something that we certainly offer here at Think and Grow Business. Wonderful. Well, that's uh, all the time we have today for questions. So on behalf of CCIQ, I'd like to thank Tony and Wendy from Think and Grow Business for taking the time to present today. I'd also like to thank everyone who has joined us for today's session. And don't forget that CCIQ has a range of webinars and events coming up over the next month or so, including the Business Mindset, Common Threads in Every Successful Business with Alton on September 18. If you want to find out more about upcoming webinars, go to the CCIQ events page to book your place. Thanks for joining us today. My name is Daryl Giles from CCIQ and I look forward to welcoming you to another webinar in the very near future.